welcome to the channel. If you're a fan of horror stories, you've come to the right place. On this channel, you'll find stories that are true, some are fictional, but as long as they send a chill down your spine and make the hair on the back of your neck stand up, if you like that sort of thing. A fair warning though, some stories contain graphic, violent or sexual content, so viewer discretion is advised. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Two years ago, my friend went missing from a hotel. I've been looking for her ever since. Written by Redditor, Jamie Francis P. I'm sharing this because if I don't come back, well, the more people that know what happened, the better. Maybe then someone will finally believe us. Every year since our college graduation, my best friend Liz and I would go on vacation together and visit a new city. As we were planning the trip for late summer 2021, she got an email saying she'd earned a free week-long stay at a hotel. She tends to travel a lot for business, so it's not too unusual for her to get a free night every now and then. One of the locations she could redeem it at was somewhere we hadn't been before, and it looked ritzy. It sounded perfect. As soon as we walked into the lobby though, something felt off. I don't know how to explain it, other than that it had weird vibes. It looked like an old building that had been recently renovated, but the bright colors, lights, paintings, it felt like someone just slapped a thin, cheery veneer over decades worth of caked on misery. The air just felt heavy. Liz didn't seem to notice it, at least not at first. The guy at the check-in desk stared at us for a while before muttering that he needed to talk to his manager. We were a bit worried that we were about to hear that the email she'd received had been a scam. But to our relief, he came back with a grin and said that they'd upgraded our room. The city skyline and faint mountains in the distance that we could see from our window won me over. That first day was fine, but when I woke up the next morning, Liz was sitting motionless on her bed, her back to me. Liz? I repeated her name several times before finally walking over to tap her on the shoulder. Hey! She finally turned to me, spoke quietly as if someone else might be listening. Did you hear it last night? I shook my head. Oh. She looked embarrassed for a moment, like she was unsure if she should continue. I couldn't sleep. Not with a scratching behind the wall, she whispered eventually. I don't like it. I'm a heavy sleeper, a bit too heavy, honestly. At home where it's just me, I have to set multiple alarms to make sure I wake up on time for work. And I've literally slept through a fire alarm once. Luckily it was a false alarm. Liz is, was the opposite. Every little noise would wake her. So she always tended to have a rough first night or two as she became accustomed to the new sounds of a place. I thought maybe after a couple of nights, she'd get used to it or chalk it up to the building settling, especially in such an old place. I'd offered to ask for a different room, but she was worried that they'd charge us. She said just try and ignore it. The day before we were supposed to check out though, she shook me awake. Her eyes were wide and frantic as she stood over me. She'd moved her nightstand aside and was pointing at a small door, three or so feet tall, that had been behind it. The door was old looking, dark wood with an antique knob and stood in contrast to everything else in the bright and modern looking room. Did you open it? She looked at me like I was out of my mind for even asking and backed away as I approached it for good measure. I figured that once we looked, we'd both feel better. I was wrong. As I carefully pushed it open, the smell of rust and bleach hit me immediately. The narrow space was long. It went further back than my phone light could reach from where I stood. After a few feet it faded into blackness. Since it was only as tall and wide as the small door, I realized I'd have to crawl on my hands and knees to see how far it went back. I hate being in the dark and can't stand small spaces. But when I looked over my shoulder at Liz and saw the bags under her eyes, the expression on her face, I figured I owed it to her to at least take a look. 
So, I crawled in. Once I was a few feet inside, I saw that the small and narrow space ended at another wall, one plastered in yellowing wallpaper. It looked so old, I guessed it was probably a part of the original hotel. The dark, patterned carpet was dotted with stains, which seemed to be contributing to at least part of the strong smell. As I backed out, I thought I heard a faint whisper coming from behind the old wallpaper in front of me. As soon as I was all the way out, I had to fight the urge to slam the door shut and run. It felt so wrong in there, I wasn't sure what the purpose of that space had once been, but even then I knew it was nothing good. Hey, I whispered as soon as the door was closed, as I tried to nonchalantly move the end table back in front of it. Why don't we pack up? We can find a different hotel for tonight. She seemed a bit calmer, said she could hang in there for the final night. After having been in that small space behind our wall, the thought of sleeping there another night honestly freaked me the hell out, but I figured that if she could make it through the last night, then so could I. After we turned out the lights that night, I remember seeing her dark silhouette sitting on the edge of her bed, motionless, until I fell asleep. That was the last time I ever saw her. When I woke up, it was almost noon. Both of our alarms were blaring. We were supposed to check out hours earlier. My confusion quickly turned to panic when I realized Liz wasn't in the room. Her suitcase, purse, phone, everything was still there. The main door was locked and chained from the inside too. At first, I couldn't think of where else she could be, until it hit me. There was one place I hadn't checked. The nightstand was still in front of the door, but I was fairly certain that it was in a slightly different spot than we had left it the day before. Reluctantly, I slid it aside. Liz? No answer. She wasn't there. I did see though what I'd thought had been a wall was open slightly. I pushed it tentatively and took a sharp breath when I saw it led into a tunnel. It went so far back, far beyond the reach of the beam of my phone light, it looked endless. Liz? I got no response other than my own voice echoing back through the narrow space. I tried to tell myself that it would be okay. I had to go in, especially if Liz had gone in there too. I took a deep breath nudged the false wall open all the way, and I entered. As I crawled on my hands and knees with my phone ungracefully held between my teeth, I tried not to think about the tight space and the pitch blackness as far as I could see in front of me or picture what Liz would have been doing down there. I tried to not focus on the streaks of nearly dried blood along the floor. I had to keep going. I knew that Liz would do the same for me. I realized that I wasn't even sure how long she had been gone for. I promised myself the walls were not shrinking around me. It was my imagination that this dark expanse couldn't go on forever. Eventually the tight darkness would end. I kept repeating it to myself over and over as a mantra just to keep myself going, to try and distract myself from the feeling of despair that seemed to fill the place. After what felt like an eternity, the tunnel ended, opening into a room without lights or windows, but it was at least large enough that I could stand and stretch out my cramped muscles. All I could make out was wall to wall, dark, crumbling bricks, and a weak looking set of stairs that led above and below. It was so quiet there, so eerie, it was easy to forget that I was in a city packed with people still inside a bustling hotel. When I shined my light upwards into the pitch blackness above my head, I could see the stairs leading to another platform like the one I was standing on. It looked like the rooms above and below ours had similar tunnels. The smell of bleach had long been replaced by the scent of mildew and old things. It felt so wrong back there, in a way that I couldn't put my finger on that I couldn't help but shiver when wondering why it had been designed that way. What had it been used for? I assumed the stairs to the tunnels above me all led to other rooms, so I went down, the protesting metal echoing up into a huge empty space above my head. 
I finally reached a heavy door, and after being in the dark for so long, the bright sunlight hurt my eyes when I opened it. I was looking into the back alley outside, around the corner from where the hotel seemed to end. The door was covered with the same bricks as the rest of the building. It was so discreet that when I closed it behind me, it blended in perfectly with the outside wall. I remember running back inside and bracing myself against the counter while I tried to convey what I'd found to anyone that would listen. I still have the image in my mind of how the dried blood on my palms stood out starkly on the white marble. It was all I could focus on as the manager tried to calm me down. He said Liz probably just wandered off. People go off on their own all the time to explore the city, he told me. She'd likely come back later. She never did. I was the one that called the police, and the officer that came out chatted casually with the hotel manager for a long time. They checked the room, I showed him the door, but he didn't seem concerned. He just repeated what the manager said. Maybe she decided to start over and didn't want to be found. I was hysterical pointed out that her purse and her phone were still in the room. She hadn't even taken her shoes. It's not uncommon, he told me, leaning in a little too close. A warning less subtle than his words was written across his face. For people to visit a city like this and never leave. I drove around for hours, asking shop owners and people outside if they'd seen her. None of them had. Eventually, I had to go home back to work. The official story is still that she just left of her own volition. I don't believe it, neither does her family or fiancé. Every so often he and I would drive up there, just on the off chance that anyone had seen her, but we'd always get the same answer. He's the one that had the idea to book the same room again, to see what we could find in the tunnels. He must have called dozens of times. He'd try to make a reservation ask if room 347 or any of the rooms directly above it are available, and they'd always tell him no. We hadn't lost all hope, but we'd certainly lost most of it, until a few days ago. I recently received an email invite letting me know I'd earned a free week, just like the one Liz received two years ago. I went to check in, and after looking me over, the guy manning the desk said he needed to get his manager, the manager, the same one as before, came out in person and I was so worried he turned me away, but he simply smiled and informed me that my room had been upgraded. I'm sure you can guess my room number. I've been trying to stay awake each night, although after everything that happened, I wouldn't be able to fall asleep here, even if I wanted to. Every night, I've just been sitting in the dark, listening to the sounds coming from behind that awful door. Sounds that I could almost swear are a bit louder, a bit closer, each night. I'm supposed to check out tomorrow morning. I have a feeling that tonight, I'll finally find out what happened to Liz. Wish me luck. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, let me know and hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel and ring my bell so that you don't miss out on future videos and awesome spine tingling goosebump giving stories. If you don't do these things, the like button will haunt your dreams and stalk your days forever.